Service Group International and a vending business consultant, and we're continuing our series on vending tools, both conceptual and physical, as well as, well, there are actually more tools to it than that. So uh, what are we going to be talking about today, Larry? I think we'll talk about one of the biggest tools you'll use every single day when you're in the vending business. That's going to be your hand truck. Tom, what do you know about hand trucks? Uh, they're they're made for handling big pieces of uh, heavy stuff and big things. Yep, and that's and that's part of it. They're made. To, they're designed to, in general to move a lot of weight, but also in the vending side. Remember, we deal in two different kinds of products. We deal largely in sodas and then in snacks and or coffee and products like that. Well, coffee coffee is kind of a medium weight item, although it never gets really heavy by soda standards. Soda, on the other hand, is a very very heavy product and very difficult to move, or very physical to move, I guess I should say. It's not difficult. When you have a good hand truck, it's quite easy. Uh, but we generally run in combinations of both, both soda and snack. So what we're going to talk about is how do you choose the particular hand truck that you are interested in using. We uh, have used all kinds of hand trucks through the years. I mean, I've, I've run many, many different kinds of hand trucks. And basically, hand trucks break down into two common types. You have a, what's called a traditional hand truck, which is a frame with two wheels on the bottom and some kind of a plate. And then there are the convertible hand trucks, which are hand trucks that, that while they have the two wheels and a plate, they also can pull out into a cart-style um, hand truck, or more like a cart. They have four wheels that slide up in, 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 in and out. Hand truck selection is largely a matter of what you really like and also what the majority of what you're going to be carrying is. If you have very heavy things, a traditional hand truck works just fine. If you're going to run a soda route, a traditional hand truck, not the convertible style, will work just fine. Um, if you're going to do largely soda, you're fine with that. And you can stack snacks on top of it, too, because the boxes will stack up on top of each other, and you can just pull it over. And I ran for years and years and years using a, a traditional hand truck then had great success with it. I was very efficient. Um, when you're running in and out of buildings, obviously you just want to move. You want to move one time. You don't want to have to make multiple trips if you can help it. Um, that, that really eats into your time because every time you have to go back to the truck, it takes you about 10 minutes. Anyway, with that said, I ended up converting over to a convertible hand truck, and that's largely because my operational um, situation changed. We started doing pre-pulls on accounts, and we had a lot more volume that we were taking in. So we converted it over to a convertible hand truck, and we had really good success with that, too. Um, and, and the choice, again, it's a lot of what you're going to have to do in your planning as to what you're going to look for. Um, convertible hand trucks allow you to make it into a cart. If you have nice, even brown or concrete, you can do it with a convertible hand truck. You can put a lot of weight on it, about 1,000 pounds they're rated for, which, which is going to be almost any time you're servicing a vending account, you won't go quite that high unless you've got a very, very large account. And then you're probably going to make multiple st stops in anyway. One thing I always want to ask people or, or tell people about is make sure you think about wheels. The wheels that you choose for your hand truck can make the difference between having an easy run and a difficult run. Um, years ago, you had a choice of pneumatic wheels or you had a choice of hard wheels. Hard wheels were great if you were on hard surfaces all the time on asphalt or concrete. Um, and pneumatic wheels were great if you were off-road at all. If you went across grass at all, you generally wanted pneumatic wheels. Um, today, there's also these never-flat wheels. And the no-flat wheels are kind of the best of both worlds. They work like a hard wheel, and they work like a soft pneumatic wheel as well. Um, they're, very, they're relatively expensive compared to a, a traditional wheel. But, folks, if you, if you need to change the wheels in your hand trucks, try those out, the never-flat styles. And there's many, many available, many different retail sources. Tom, do you have any questions about hand trucks? Uh, yeah, I mean, there there's so many different ones. Are, are there any in particular that you uh, like or recommend? I recommend you buy a good quality aluminum hand truck. Uh, either a Magliner or a Westco. Uh, there are some other brands that are just as fine. Some of them have interchangeable parts with either of those two. But you want a good quality aluminum one. You want an aluminum hand truck largely because 
on a day in and day out basis, you have to move that hand truck a lot. You're going to be pulling it in and out of the vehicle all the time. The extra weight, I've run with steel ones. I've done it. I'm going to tell you, it works. They work just fine. End of the day, they're heavy. Uh, they'll tire you out. An aluminum one is light. It will pull off. A couple of things just to worry about, or not worry about, but just be aware. Aluminum does wear, so be careful scraping it on concrete and things like that um, as far as the, actually dragging the metal on the concrete. But I always say buy an aluminum hand truck. Handle choices, I've used rings, I've used handles. I personally like rings or, or a loop style, but then again, it's a personal choice. If you if you like the handles, get the handles. So, other questions? Uh, no, that's great. That's great. Um, well, uh, I guess that's all the time we have for now. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, basic toolkit next. Yes, we're going to do a discussion on what your basic tools for a vending operator are going to be as far as a, if you're going to be a single owner operator, there are certain tools you're going to need to have with you all the time, and we'll go over a basic toolkit for that uh, application in the next show. All right, if you uh, want to get more of good vending business tips like this, be sure to subscribe. And you've been watching the Vending Business Show, a publication of A&M Equipment Sales. Thank mm -hmm. you.